So, let's again just go through the basic rules of the game. Um, so basically there are three decks of development cards that you can use. Um, and um, these contain um, 20, 30, and 40 cards, respectively. Uh, four of these are placed in each row on the table, and they're laid out like this, and you get all these gems, and you're aiming to develop the development cards um, using diamonds, sapphire, emerald, ruby, and onyx. And uh, yeah, there are also gold tokens, which are a wild token that can substitute for any of the other resource types. Um, wow, that is pretty intense music. I thought I turned this down quite a bit, but apparently not. Okay, but anyhow, number of tokens depends on the number of players, yada yada yada. Just let's get to the basics of the game. So you want to score points both in collecting nobles by collecting cards. So these cards have little indicators, have little gems in the corner, and these gems can add up to acquire cards in the noble tile deck. Or um, the cards themselves um, sometimes have numbers on them. Generally in the top row and the middle row they have larger numbers than the bottom row. get 15 points by acquiring cards and noble tiles. Uh, you get all these points as indicated on, you know, like in the corner here where it says 4, where it says 3. Um, here's the avatar and coat of arms that represents you in the user interface and shows your prestige points. Uh, you select one of four actions. You take gems. You can't have more than 10 tokens or 10 gems. Two, uh, take two gems of the same color. Um, you can never, if there are four, I'm sorry, if there are three, two, or one, or zero in a stack, you can't take two of that same color. Your resources are shown at the bottom of the screen. Let's practice. Let's take one of these. I'll take one of those. And a ruby. And end your turn. And this game flows pretty quickly. Okay, we can also reserve a card. Just pick a card out, stick it in your hand. Instead of developing it, you just reserve it in your hand so other players can't use it. And you also acquire a gold token during such reservation. And if you have more than three reserved cards... Oh, I'm sorry, you max out at three reserved cards. I never reserve cards because it's really a waste of a turn to do so. Unless there's something you're really, really aiming for. You know, finally you can purchase a card outright by changing in the correct number of uh, tokens indicated in the lower left. Uh, produces a bonus point as indicated in the upper left of the card. Um, so this is your hand, you would have, oh yeah, I'm sorry, these bonus points, are, these are production based on what's indicated in the upper right hand corner of each card produce these each time you make a purchase. So for example, now you have a uh, recurring two bonus, um, uh, what's the color, blue, or you have an emerald uh, bonus each time you do a purchase. Um, if you want to only, if you want to purchase this card, you get a discount based on that production or that bonus uh, is indicated on other cards. So we'll work through the details of that as we play the game. You watch the gems get spent as you buy things. At the end of a turn, sometimes you might get the chance to acquire a noble if you have the correct number of cards um, that you have built up. And yeah, you can play multiplayer or you can play solitaire. Generally, you play two to four players, although this game does have a solitaire mode, which is quite impressive. So, that said, um, yeah, let's play against the AI. There's me. There's a balanced player, 
I'm not sure that there are other players that can pick. My best score apparently is 82,500 just based on scoring a lot of points really quickly. Um, oh, so I can pick their strategy based on uh, what I want to do. Random behavior. Secret behavior. Balanced. Specialized. Opportunistic. Um, yeah, okay, we'll pick balanced. Um, hopefully balanced is the easiest one to defeat. Alright. So first to 15 wins. Um... Let's go. Uh, I'm not the first player, I'm in second position. Alright, so you're taking some gems. I think I'll take some gems. I might even just take the same ones you took. Um, yeah, I actually want one of the white uh, diamond gems. So these will help me acquire cards that are in the bottom row which produce resources that help me acquire other cards at a discount. Um, Alright, so I'm seeing that Ruby is going very quickly. I'm taking a diamond, and maybe I also want to take... yeah, I'll take an emerald. So all those help me acquire cards in the bottom row. Alright, so you take probably one of the more expensive things in the bottom row. I could get this Ruby one. I see is used to purchase some of the other cards on here, so it's not a bad thing to have. Let's take it. It cost me two and two. Uh, so now I get a discount of one ruby each time I make a ruby purchase. Alright. Um, so I need ruby and emerald for just about any purchase. Um, I want to be uh, hoarding the blue gems, so I'm not going to pursue that. Um, yeah, so my opponent did collect that card, as I expected. Uh, I see that blue is used. I'm not sure what the blue gem is. It's not sapphire. Um, or maybe it is. At any rate, so now I have a bonus one blue and one red each time I make a purchase. And so maybe I want to be aiming to get this thing here, which requires two blue, a red, and two white. Um, in general, I try to collect the gem types that other players are collecting. Because those are the scarcest ones. Those are the easiest, or the most difficult to obtain. Um, huh. Okay, well, that was quite good. I can't purchase any of these at the moment, so um, maybe I do take a red. That helps me obtain this. I'm going to get enough blue. Okay, I need a white to obtain that. And a green. Um, so this makes me eligible to grab a number of cards in that bottom row. I'm not sure which one I want the most. Um, probably the emerald one. Let's take an emerald one, because emeralds can be used to help acquire some of these other ones. Okay, so now I see that onyx can help me acquire this one here, so... Which onyx do I go for? I have a discount of red, green, and blue. Uh, so I get a double discount over here, but this costs five in the first place. This costs four. both pretty expensive. Yeah, I think this is the one I want to obtain so I get to keep most of my gems. Either way, I'm spending all of my diamonds. Um, okay, my opponent picked the one that I was hoping to get later on, but unfortunately there's something that takes its place. So I could obtain that. Uh, the 
the only one I don't have a bonus of each turn is diamond. Um, so that actually would be a really useful one to grab. It'd be a diamond that recurs each turn. So now I get a bonus um, one for any purchase that I make. what it is that they have. I don't think so. Oh, I can. So, they have a bonus one diamond, two sapphire, I don't know, one ruby. So that's their bonus each turn. I have a bonus of one across the board. So, it makes further purchases. Actually, I've used up all my gems exactly. I was going to say, it makes furniture purchases really easy, except I'm out of gems entirely. Um, let's see, are rubies useful? No, in general, emeralds seem to be useful for this middle row. What color recurs the most? Um, Expensive cards in the middle row. Let's grab Onyx. Oh! There's one that takes five diamond to acquire. That's pretty expensive. Okay, so this one would cost me a blue. This one would cost me a blue and a white. Or blue and a. Uh, Let's just go with the colors and forget the gem names. Um, so, do I take that? Is red useful elsewhere? I don't think so. I mean, you never know what's going to come up next, I guess. Also, my opponent is hoarding all the blue gems, so I don't want to give them another. Well, they have all the blue ones they need to acquire this top card, which is the one they're going for. Um, oh, I see over here that Onyx would be quite useful for acquiring any of these nobles. Um, so we're going to go for Onyx. So my opponent took the card that I was aiming for, so um, that does complicate my life somewhat. Let's see, let's just take another emerald. Does that help? Let's, let's hope it helps. I'm just going to hoard some gems and then spend them all in the most efficient possible manner. Alright, so I get this practically for free. Not entirely, but that would be a free card for me. If I could grab that, that would be free. Yeah. So now I can get this, which gets me a ruby each turn. Um, do I grab this? So there's some diamond cards out here. It cost me one. It cost me one ruby and yeah, a lot more. Um, so I'm gonna grab the diamond card. 
It cost me a single gem to grab that, and that makes it possible for me to grab the ruby. So I'm getting all kinds of bonuses down here. Three, two, one, two, two. Uh, so I've almost reached one of these out here. Um, my opponent's at six prestige points, but I don't think I'm too worried about that. And yeah, this would cost me a ruby. Uh, this has cost me grab that. So now we get three ruby each time we make a purchase. Um, okay. I've practically got this one, which is four diamond, four onyx. Ah, I've grabbed my onyx. Okay. There's only so much I can do in a single turn. some more emeralds though that would bring me closer. Let's do that. Ah my opponent grabbed this bonus. I might be losing this now. Generally I've always grabbed those bonuses, so I'm not sure how to play without them. Congratulations! Alright. That's six points now. If I got one more onyx, I would have um, the other three bonus. How many gems have I got? I've got six gems in hand. Sure. I have to grab something. Okay, this scores me a point, so I'll take it. Can I get the onyx? Uh oh, I lost. Yep, the game will end after this move. So I lost by a four point margin, which incidentally is the margin of that noble that I missed. Well, kind of, sort of, not really. Alright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get how I lost that. Um, I wasn't paying very much attention. Let's try this again. I get second position again. Maybe this time I'll do better at collecting. Well, also not getting beaten out for every time I want to collect something. Um, um, so yeah, red seems common. Black seems common. Blue seems common-ish. Okay, so my opponent's gotten what? I mean, that, that flew by way too fast. I can't keep up with it. I guess I can keep up with what's in the stockpile here, but um, um, I'm not sure that that's an efficient way to go about things. Uh, 
that's not what I want. I want the diamond, the, we'll say sapphire, which I'm sure I'm getting wrong, but yeah. So I want this card, and no doubt my opponent beat me to it. Um, that's okay. There's almost always some alternative out there. So I get a ruby bonus for each purchase. Um, which is quite strong actually here. Um, this is, I'm set up to grab this onyx thing. And so I do grab it. And I have a bonus ruby and a bonus onyx each purchase. Um, and yeah, my opponent grabs the card that I was aiming for next, so it allows me to redirect my efforts to something else. Um, yeah, it's actually really good. So I have three ruby in hand, and unless my opponent reserves that card, I'm going to get it. Possibly I derped by getting that. Um, uh, I don't know if I can articulately explain it, but I think I did a less than optimal move is my point. But at least with lots of gems in hand, I'm able to easily grab other cards. Like this one cost me, oh, two gems, wow. Wow, that was way more expensive than anticipated. Um, let's see if I grab this, and how do I make myself eligible to grab other cards? Um, it's amazing how there's no onyxes out there. Alright, you can grab the next card that I was aiming for. Well played. Um, hopefully I can continue to afford these cards. They're really, the prices aren't matching up at all with the gems that I'm producing. I feel like I'm playing either against a really optimal AI or I'm just not playing well. Um, or maybe both, but... Um, how do I balance this? That costs four onyx. That's not happening at the moment. Um, Also, there's not enough diamond to help me purchase this card, but, um... Hmm. Amazing. Well, I guess that's kind of forcing me to purchase the one in the middle row, eh? Yeah, here we go. Two points. Oh, it only cost me three gems to take it. Generally, I fixate a lot on this bottom row, because those are the easy ones to get, generally. Um, sometimes there will be exceptions where things in the middle of the row are easier to get in, than those in the bottom row, but that almost never happens. Okay. Emerald's quite useful. It's also pretty expensive. I don't think my opponent can buy that out from under me. So I'm going to grab this one first. And then I'm going to grab uh, the emerald. Alright, so pretty much um, auto-played my way here, and this is where strategies, I guess, begin. This one doesn't cost me anything to pick up. I'll pick it up for free and score a point. Um, <laughs> all right, Onyx is useful for gathering these nobles here. And note, this time there wasn't a four and four noble. Um, all these are just three, three, and three. So it's a little 
easier to plan, at least in terms of trying to get one of those. Um, so that was a emerald, I'm sorry, that was a diamond producing card. All right, so I got three red, three blue. There isn't one that has three red and three blue here. Um, there are a couple that have three green. Oh, and there are a couple that have three black. So really, there isn't anything telling me to go one direction or another. Wait. Before I do that, what's my opponent going to buy? My opponent uh, is not going to take that Onyx card because they can't afford it. They might take this Emerald card, though. Um, so I should be a jerk and take this one. And then next turn, take something else. So now I want to take the Onyx card. And the Noble bonus that comes with that. Thank you. Thank you very much. And wait, wait, wait. Um, so I found it close to grabbing either of these. Not really. Okay, unlike last game, my opponent's not going to claim all the things that I'm about to claim. Uh, so I can afford to optimize my play a little bit. Um, so perhaps uh, I want to take this Onyx here, because there are a lot of cards that require Onyx to purchase. Um, having more would make it easier for me to score points in that regard. Um, yeah, I'm going to take this one. Even though it doesn't immediately score me anything, it does make it cheaper to afford other cards. Um, huh. Okay, we're going to take the one that my opponent could afford and make it put it out of reach. And I have to choose a noble. Um, let's see, three white, three black, three blue. Well, these both have blue in them, so it doesn't matter. My opponent can't score that many blue in one turn. Um, I mean, maybe it does matter, but I'm not seeing the difference. All right, so I'm at 10 points. Um, I could score a couple more, I'd be golden here. Yes, yeah, so three and three. If I just grab a couple onyx, then I'm threatening to claim this four point card. And that would put me at 17, which is not bad for being second place, or the second place player. Uh, so I got a six point spread over my opponent. And that ends the game. Jeez. <laughs> I have no idea how the score is determined, but I scored a lot. Yeah. I'm guessing part of that's based on completely blowing by the goal of 15 and having six more points than my opponent's has. Um, yeah, I scored four, one, one, and two, plus the three nobles. So I just completely blew my opponent out of the water, um, which kind of makes up for my earlier defeat. Um, so that said, I'll, I'll keep experimenting with some more multiplayer game setup sorts of things, and hopefully have something more to show next time. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you around.